What's going on everybody? Alex with you here again as usual. Thanks for dropping by for yet another chess video. I'm very excited for this particular video today because in this video I'll be giving you guys my review and personal opinion about the how to win at chess by Levy Rosman aka Gotham Chess. If you guys are not familiar with this particular chess YouTuber, I would actually be kind of surprised by this time. It's the biggest YouTube chess channel uh, at this point. And Levy has brought us so much great content, both informative, quirky, entertaining. I love this guy. I've been watching a lot of his videos. Levy, by the way, if you end up watching this video for some unknown reason, be sure to hit a like below and maybe comment. I'll be sure to highlight your, your, your comment to let everybody know that you've seen this video. But, you know, that's kind of wishful thinking. Anyways. Um, I wanted to kind of give you guys a brief idea what this book is all about. I purchased this book a couple of weeks ago on Amazon. It retailed for $24.99 uh, US dollars, $33.99 Canadian. And at the time, I kind of read the synopsis of this book, and, which said that this book would probably be most helpful to chess players with a rating ELO somewhere between 800 to 1300. Um, and I thought to myself that given that my ELO is slightly higher than 1300, I didn't really know if this book was going to be very applicable or informative. Perhaps it would be sort of covering the basics or things that I was already familiar with. Like I said, I was going into a territory. I didn't really know what to expect. On Amazon, there's going to be two ways that you can purchase this book. You can purchase it on Kindle, I think for $10, or you can purchase this hardcover here for $24. I feel like if uh, if I was you, I would consider purchasing the hardcover because that way it's uh, it's always going to be there. You can always have it on the shelf. You can come back and reference it any time in the future if you choose to sort of revisit some of the openings. Um, that might be very beneficial to a lot of people. Inside, uh, one of the things that I immediately noticed is a couple of things actually. The very first thing is that unlike some of the other chess books, for example, the uh, 1986 uh, Kasparov teaches chess and many of the other chess books out there when you when you're reading the book and hopefully this will be in focus but a lot of times they'll have these sort of uh, notations over here and, and sometimes this is just sort of a small amount of notation but in other books you'll have notations that will go on for the whole page before they even start explaining the position or whatever they're trying to get to so unless you're like really high uh, chess rated player who can just read the notations and set the position in their mind, most of the time you have to have some kind of a chess board in front of you in order for you to go through a book like this. Um, unlike, the, unlike this particular book, the way that this book has been set up is that anytime that Levy wants you to understand any particular position or any particular movement of pieces or anything he wants you to understand where a board would otherwise be required, he sets up these images that will actually go step by step of any particular move that he wants you to see, whether it's describing certain openings, middle game, or any other ideas he wishes to share with you, he will actually step by step draw the pieces out moving across the board, which makes this very easy to understand step by step. You don't have to have a board. You don't have to have a computer in front of you. You can be taking this book with you on the subway, in the taxi, wherever you're going. You can be reading this book at your like lunchtime in between in between your work hours or whatever. It's very easy and sort of independent of chess sets. That's the very first thing that I notice about this book. Easy to read, easy to understand. This book is very nicely divided into two parts. The very far first part is the part one that uh, sort of aims to teach chess to people with a chess rating of zero to 800. Now, initially when I saw that part, the very first sort of uh, tendency for me to do was to just skip that section and go to the next section and hopefully get some information that's actually gonna be usable. But I didn't do that. I didn't do that because I was wanting to do a review that's gonna be more or less thorough of the book and not just skip around and then tell you, oh yeah, this book is great. No, I wanted to read this book word for word and it took me uh, about a week and a half to two weeks to really kind of get this done, done with this book so that I can give you a thorough review. Um, so I read the very first section and one of the things that I realized is that although in the beginning of that very first section, they teach you the very basic concepts like moving pieces and how the pieces can check other pieces and basically how to do very basic checkmates and what's the point of chess, basically gearing towards informing the very, very novice chess players, those that probably haven't played any games about how to play games how to win at games 
and how to position yourself for success in chess. But very quickly, even in the first section, uh, let me transition into more important, more informative concepts, things that sort of build one on top of the other to, to really get, give a, get us thinking about why we make certain moves, even starting with like different openings. He, he shows us different elements of like space management. Why do we open this pawn? Why do we open that pawn? So in the first section, he tries to kind of make us understand the key elements of, you know, of why certain moves are important. Uh, he talks about tactics, tactics, strategy, middle game, endings. There's a lot of things that is actually covered in this book, a lot more than I realized would have been. On top of that, one of the coolest things that I like about this book that I didn't see in any of the other books, at the very end of each chapter, you will have a summary. And at the very end of the summary, there will always be some kind of a QR code like this that you can scan with your phone that will further give you additional practice um, material for you to learn and really solidify what that particular chapter was discussing, whether he wants to show you different openings, whether he wants to show you different tactics or strategy, it's all there. So even though the book is only, I think about 250 pages, you're getting a lot of additional information here. I scanned some of these QR codes and when you scan it with your phone, you immediately are brought up to what I think is like a browser or something and it, you can go ahead and solve the things. There's, there's different exercises for you to do so. It's almost like a workbook, which is really cool because I feel like unlike watching YouTube videos really, uh, reading about chess and, and seeing these particular concepts described on paper somehow creates uh, a situation where your brain is able to, to solidify the knowledge or perceive the knowledge in a different way than if you were just sitting there watching YouTube videos. And when it's time for you to actually play games, I feel like when you've read these things and you've practiced them, somehow you're able to remember them a little bit easier and therefore they become a little bit more helpful at the time when they're actually needed. So that's another thing that I really found about this book. Now, once I was done with the first part of the book, the second part really kind of starts to get into some more solid ideas, starting with specifically describing different openings for white and black and how certain openings are more beneficial than others. How do you play a particular opening when your opponent plays in a certain way, certain uh, sort of balancing things? He really takes the time to, to describe a lot of different things that although I knew some of these openings, I really didn't sort of take the time to. Most of the time when I play games, I'll play the E4 for white and I'll play the scotch opening. I like these open games, but there are times when I'm playing with more advanced chess players and I'll play the E4 and they'll start with a Sicilian. Or if I'm playing black, they'll start with D4 and go with the London system. And then I feel like I'm less prepared for uh, you know for for the game i feel like the consequences of the openings are really important this is another thing that he harps on in this in this particular book is even though you might be one of the people like me and you're always going with the same opening you should definitely take the time to learn about all the other openings so that when you're playing against somebody else who tries something different at least you'll be prepared and you're gonna be able to counterplay in such a way that it's gonna be more favorable for you, as opposed to just being like me and just being completely lost. Just the other day, I went to a tournament and I, uh, I was playing some casual games with, with the person. Every time I went with the E4, he started with a Sicilian. And Sicilian is, by the way, also covered in this particular book and uh, uh, briefly, and, and also how do you play for white if somebody starts playing S Sicilian? so that you can sort of maximize your control of the center, so you can maximize your success in finishing the game. Another cool thing that, I've, uh, that I wanted to note in this particular book is that uh, unlike the 1986 uh, Kasparov Teaches Chess, where he starts off by saying that, you know, chess is, is very mysterious and unexplained, and uh, at this point in our, you know, time, computers are not really able to analyze chess to the depth that you know people are and, and every move that you make is a good enough move and we don't know the consequences of everything. In 2023, he talks about some concepts like for example, the end games for instance, the king uh, versus pawn uh, and king game has essentially been solved because of the computer analysis with best play, it has been solved. 
So there's some elements that he talks about that basically, yes, the computer has gone through and analyzed all those games for us and we can and we can very confidently say that certain positions, if you find yourself in those positions, there is going to be a chance that you're going to win if you play correctly, basically. So we can see that there's definitely, you know, a transition between the time when we didn't have computers to the time now the computers are able to help us analyze some of these games that are also going to be helpful helpful to us in, in learning chess in the first place. Another thing I find very interesting in this book is that Levy gives us a lot of these statistical data with regards to like how many times has a certain opening been played, how many times has a certain move been played and it's, it's kind of cool to see because he does have sort of the insight to that particular data and uh, it's, it's very fascinating. Like for example, he says that the E4 opening, the king side, king pawn opening has been uh, achieved like 65 million times, as opposed to the D4 opening has been achieved like a lot less. I really do feel like Levy takes a, a lot of time to make sure that by reading the, this book, you're actually gonna find this helpful. Like he actually cares whether or not you're going to improve your chess rating. I really, genuinely feel like that's the case here. He gives you this information in a very self-explanatory way. He really wants you to, to learn. I know on his YouTube channel he, he wants you to learn, but he's also creating videos that are gonna be more entertaining. Here in the book, I really, really genuinely feel like Levy takes the time to ensure that you know he like reiterates on certain things like do this, don't do that, try this instead, you know, experiment with that to really improve your rating. So regardless of whether your rating is like 800 or even 16 or 1700, I feel like this book would be helpful to a lot of people out there. Um, I think one of the things that sort of the key element that I was able to take away by reading this book is he says that as far as openings, learn all the openings, uh, but don't try to experiment with all of them, especially when you're going on tournaments learn a few openings and, and really take the time to learn them in a greater depth so that you're gonna be a lot more prepared. Another thing he says is, uh, you know, if you're going with the very common openings, for example, like the E4, you're gonna be up against a lot of people that are also very familiar with that opening and they can create a counterplay that's gonna be very serious and set up traps that you might sort of not be prepared for. Now, if you're going with less common openings, if you're gonna go with, for example, the London system, a lot of times people are not gonna be prepared as much because they might spend all their time playing sort of the mainstream opening and it might make sense for you to experiment with, with sort of the less popular opening so that way it'll give you an advantage, especially to people that may not have spent as much time sort of learning those things. And I do have to agree with that. I used to play a lot of the Queen's Gambit uh, opening before, but I find that n now having read Levy's book, I might try the London more and just experiment with that. Um, he gives you like really, really solid I ideas as far as space management, space control of the pawns, the importance of all your pieces working together. I feel like the book like ties in really, really well. Tactics, strategy, he talks about like like even at the very end, things just tie in so nicely that I feel like even if all the concepts he described in this book are already familiar to you in every way, I feel like by the time you're done with this book, you have just a more of a solid sort of refreshment or a solid understanding of everything that he describes. And, and when you finish the last page, you're ready to not only experiment with new things, but you're ready to improve your chess level. I do feel like after reading this book, I feel more confident in playing chess and just basically facing my opponents and sort of facing whatever they might throw at me. I, I feel more confident that I can now uh, go out there and play in such a way that it's gonna sort of improve my success of my games overall. So. I would highly recommend this book to just about anybody with a rating not only of 800 to 1300, but honestly, if your rating is even like 1700, this book would be a great refresher. It's very easy to read. Uh, it's very easy to understand. It's very step by step. He really wants you to learn all that's in this book. 
and I feel like he's done this book has done really well if Levy ever decides to make a part two to this book I definitely pick it up and I definitely think it's worth your $25 to consider picking up this book I'm not uh, I'm not sponsored by Levy I wish I was I'm not so this is my honest opinion um, learning, reading this book made me realize just how much information you can actually take in from reading a book that now I'm actually starting to read the Kasparov Teaches Chess and probably will start ordering additional books to read um, because this particular book is not as easy to follow since you do have to have a physical chessboard I'm also thinking about picking up like a travel uh, chessboard that I have indeed ordered already going to be somewhat of a smaller like a 12 by 12 close-up chessboard with magnetic pieces so I feel like that's going to be really nice because I was looking for a, like a smaller board that I can just put on my lap while I'm reading this I don't want to set up something really big because then I would have to set it up every time I'm reading this book but if I had a smaller sort of a travel size analysis board that would be really really helpful to me in in reviewing some of these books but all of a sudden, thanks to Levy and his book, I went from somebody that really didn't see much of a use from reading chess books to somebody that now feels like the best way that you can improve your chess rating is go through some chess books. So, like I said before, if Levy ends up uh, watching this video and if he feels like I've done an okay job at, uh, you know, kind of giving you an idea what this book is all about, um, be sure, Levy, to leave something in the description below I would definitely appreciate it uh, because like I said I love your channel and I love everything that you do keep up the good work and uh, for every one else of us I hope you guys consider picking up this book consider adding it to your chess library or make it be the first book of your chess library I hope everybody gets to play chess enjoys this beautiful weather out there and uh, stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video okay Bye-bye.